Okay, well, let's start this. My name is Elio Martinez. I am part of the Starling Next project. I will talk a little bit about myself. I have more than 12 years of experience in testing, working for graphics, working for kernel, and so on. I, and I was caught by the Starling Next team probably eight months ago. I'm really excited to talk about this because it seems to be the more challenging and interesting project that I was part of. So let's start with this presentation. Uh, at the beginning, we need to know some basic concepts in order to understand what, I'm, what are we trying to do with SUL. First of all, we, want, we need to know what Starling X is. It is a completely fully scalable software platform capable of too many good stuff. I think that the most important should be that it's completely easy to deploy. It has low touch manageability. It is rapid to response. And at last, it is fast to recovery. OK, we're thinking to implement SUL as a main tool with the continuous integration. But what does a continuous integration design needs to be? It seems to be really straightforward, right? But it is not. We need, at first, should be compatible with the OpenStack continuous integration. Other point is that it should be easy to maintain, should be regression testing capable, and it needs to keep your testing fast. As a disclaimer, all the stuff that I'm going to tell you on this presentation, it's only from the testing phase. We are not going to talk about the development cycle. Um, I think there is a point for the QI guys, right? We are thinking one step in front of the developers. OK, story next, continuous integration. SUL, but exactly what is, what is SUL? Getting from the website, we can read that SUL is a pipeline-oriented project gating system. It facilitates running tests and automated tasks in response to Garrett events. SUL is a program that drives continuous integration delivery and project and deployment system with a focus on project gating and interrelated project. But is that it? Why? We can choose another stuff, right? We can choose another tool. Why SUL? First of all, and I think that is the most important part, is that we want to be completely aligned with the OpenStack Foundation. We, as an Starling Next project, we want to maintain our four principal principles. So that is open collaboration, open design, open development, and as a consequence, a completely open source project. And I think that uh, another good part of using SUL is that we can use it in two different fronts. One of them as a gatekeeper, and the second one as an job orchestrator. What are, those, what are the advantages that SUL can bring into the project? First of all, it is really easy to configure. Second one, and as I mentioned before, it can be used as a gatekeeper or job-oriented, both in the same project. It is completely garage friendly. It is Jenkins compatible using the German plugin. And it is optimized for Ansible playbooks as well. So we know what Star Linux is. We know that we need to implement a continuous inter integration infrastructure using SUL. We know all those advantages that SUL can bring into the project. But it becomes with three main questions, right? First of all, what is the Star Linux place in relation with the OpenStack community? We don't want to duplicate the those existing test cases that all the, all the projects are execu executing so far. 
Plus, what can be tested in the infrastructure that already exists? Again, we have to save time. We don't want to duplicate jobs. And the most important should be what kind of infrastructure do we need for those specific, specific features that are going to make Starling Next unique? And with these three questions, we are creating a plan in order to accomplish our goal. I'm making emphasis on those specific features that are making uh, sort of next unique because we need to understand that these features need to be tested in a different way with a different infrastructure added to the existing one. So answering these questions, the implementation will, will challenge the following uh, questions. First, Store Linux is completely new with the OpenStack community. It will introduce uh, additional functionality, as we know. And all the, all the testing phase should be completely automated. And from the scratch, we already got more than 3,500 manual test cases that need to be automated as soon as possible. Talking about the, the configuration, we know that we have several configurations. The first one should be just a single server that contains all the stuff that the cloud, that the edge cloud system needs. The compute, the controller, and the, the storage part. The dual server that is not just the, the mirroring for one server for the other. If one server fails, then the other one will take all the functionality. And the multiple server that contains in a separate way all the different phases for the edge cloud. So, getting back to the SOL implementation, we are trying to implement SOL, as I mentioned before, in two different ways. First one, as a gatekeeper, and the second one, as a job orchestrator. If I'm talking too slow, just throw me something, please. As I'm showing on the slide, uh, as a gatekeeper, SUL needs to solve all those dependency issues according with the test cases that are going to be developed, right? And as a job orchestrator, must be considered for all the testing phases and needs to be designed for different test suites. Sorry. So let's start with the first phase, as a gatekeeper in the test code development. Just to let you know, we are using Robot as an automation framework. Why Robot? First of all, it is completely Python-based. That's a good point, because if we need to create certain validation we can use simple Python scripts, and Robot will read it straightforward without any kind of dependencies issues. Second one, Robot has a plenty good of libraries that we can reuse in order to save time. We have already uh, a Selenium library in order to test everything related with Ryzen, and it has a libraries to work like a command line interface. As another important part from our test cases is that we're including tax. I know tax doesn't solve anything. We need to be really careful using tax because we need to maintain them and check what is the, the functionality for each of this. And at least our testing should be smart enough to to return expected value to see if we are executing what we really want. We don't want just to return code zero as a pass validation criteria. With this in mind, okay, how are we developing our test cases so far? Until today, we are following the monolithic way. One developer working on a single test case, 
submitting the code to get, uh, to, to get it, then going through the revision until it reaches the qualification. Then the code is going to be merged. So far so good, right? But what happened if you have a large group of developers working on all the test cases? You will create a bottleneck effect. Why? Because there are going to be some dependencies. If one developer touched the same file that other one, you will create merge conflict. And from one team, only that developer that doesn't touch the other files, it's going to be merged. So again, what problems stand to the surface? The development will be really slow because of those merging conflicts that I, I mentioned before. And as a, as a consequence, the testing will be executed really, really slow, and we don't want to waste time. So then so come into the rescue and say, you know what, I can create gating system for you in order to avoid those dependencies issues. Let's put an, a simple example. Two different patches touching almost the same files. Soul is going to pick one after the other and then complete the merging. Please remember that Soul will give you the first revision point of your code. As a matter of fact, all the, all the contributors in certain next with the OpenStack community are having this revision. They only need to adjust those conditions in order to make those patches a little bit smarter. But what does a SUL gate contain exactly? It is made of three main components. The first, it has all the codes already merged in a temporal repo. The second one is that you can modify and create conditions that validate your code through pipelines, wrote in JML format. And the most important, the job scheduler, because it is going to merge one patch after the other, avoiding those carried conflicts. But what happened after the merging part? We need to identify those test cases in order to split them into different configurations, into different components, and if we want, we can identify if this test case is going to be executed on a virtual environment or the bare metal environment. So I think that we are ready with the first phase the test code development using SUL as a gatekeeper, we can move to the second phase using SUL as a job orchestrator. We have a big large number of test cases that we need to identify, that we need to current case according with the component, according with the configuration, and according if we are going to introduce special features. Again, I'm really, I'm really making emphasis on the special features because it is the most part important, it is the most important part from Sterling X perspective. Then, with this kind of organization, we can create different suites according with our needs. What are those special features? I'm not going to get deep into this because uh, we're going to have plenty numbers of sessions talking about those special features that are making Sorrel Next unique. So let's start with the execution. Again, we are not going to talk about the development cycle. We are going to consume already compiled ISIS. So we are going to execute the sanity testing. We are going to execute a special ISO that contains all these special features and 
a full testing cycle. I'm including in this slide a Jenkins because uh, we already have one Jenkins jobs executing the sanity testing. We want to develop or we want to implement SUL using Ansible playbooks. And in future slides, I'm going to tell you why. But what is inside of an Ansible playbook? Again, it is really straightforward for us. It is quoted in a GML format. It contains all the instructions that need to be executed. And it is similar but not equal to a bash instruction. So it's pretty, pretty easy to, to read and pretty easy to, to configure. What should be the execution timeline? As I mentioned before, we are going to consume ISOs. We are creating one ISO daily that contains all the changes that came from the community. We are going to create special feature ISOs. We don't have any estimated time for this. It depends on how, how the developer is working on the changes that Starling Next needs. And of course, we will have our official release. This official release needs to be tested in every way. It needs to be tested using all the configurations against all the possible test suites. So that's introduced our testing scope. As I mentioned before, the sanity testing only will execute or only will exercise those special features or those basic features that the ISO needs to be tested on, such as the boot up, such as the live migration, such as the instance creation, all of this test. Uh, so far, we have about 30 test cases just to validate that our ISOs are stable. The second circle contains all the special features that we want to introduce. Again, we need to be really careful with this special feature science. We don't know how deep is going to affect the other OpenStack components. According to the feature, it's going to be the scope. So it can be bigger or smaller. And of course, the full testing. The full testing need to, needs to have um, several test suites because we want to test all the OpenStack components. We want to get performance values in order to see if we are having progress with the new features. Again, the special features need to be tested against the other components. We want to be compliant. That's because we are, just, we are going to use Tempest. And why not? We can add to this scope stress testing. So reporting. Mm, as a matter of fact, Robert can bring you all the, all the reporting part, but we need something that can organize those reports as soon as we get the execution done. So for the sanity testing, we are going to have one report daily. For the special features, we are, we are going to have the full report once that we get the ISO. And the full testing needs to divide or needs to split those reports according with the test suites that we are going to, to execute. Then you can also imagine all the full picture. We are going to work in parallel our test cycle, sorry, the test development cycle, creating all the test cases, using SUL as a gatekeeper. The second one, we are going to consume the ISOs. Then SUL is going to work as an job orchestrator. And it will be the main bridge in order to start uploading all the reporting. So let's go back on time and see what are we doing so far. At the beginning, we have a lot of manual test cases that need to be automated, and we don't have any CI CD infrastructure so far. 
what are we going to do? We are going to implement Zool as a gatekeeper for the test code deployment. We are going to implement Zool as an job orchestrator for the different test suites that we are creating. And we want Zool as a main bridge for reporting as well. The full expectation should be that we have Zool working on every single phase as a gatekeeper and, and as a job orchestrator without any kind of Jenkins jobs. Why is that? Because we want an homogeneous environment. We don't want to maintain two different kind of jobs. So, as a conclusion, we plan to use Zool as a main CI tool because the community feels comfortable with it and we have a lot of support on the subject. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to save time. We don't want to waste time just investigating more tools. If the community feels comfortable and it's already running, use it. And of course, we want to maintain our four principles. We want to keep Starling Next completely as an open source project. I know that this way to solve the issue can bring you a lot of questions, but I think that the best way to solve it is as a community. Uh, I will upload all the progress during this implementation, and if you have suggestions or if you want to comment something, if you see any opportunity, just let me know. And for that, we have several ways to communicate. We have our IRC channel, it's starting next at Freenode. We have our mailing list, and you can join the weekly meetings through Zoom. Okay, I think that I speak so, so fast. <laughs> questions? No questions? Well, I will give you back 20 minutes if you want to enjoy a beer outside. Thank you so much.